<laughs> like we say that every time. I know, but sometimes it works immediately and sometimes it does not. Truth. There we go. Hello, everybody. It's and week three. It is week three yeah. of the Ranunculus Knit Along. Um, I realize I don't think we actually introduce ourselves every week. <laughs> I'm Emily. This is Caitlin. Hi. <laughs> More from Fabrications Ottawa. <laughs> That's so you funny. Know, just the general uh, stuff that I'm sure Katie's screaming at us to do through her well, screen. <laughs> it does say in the description. Oh, that's usually. true. That's but true. Uh, yeah. yes, most people who <laughs> shop at the store yeah, have yeah. seen us or yeah. talked to us. So. Exactly. so, yeah. So let me just open up to my yeah. ranunculus page here. Hold on. So, um, just to recap, we're making the ranunculus sweater. Mm hmm. Um, this crop version. Yep. Um, did you want to hop on our YouTube page to see if we've got comments coming up so yes, far? Yes, I will do that. And I'll do a little recap of what we've done so far. So mm -hmm. in week one, we talked about casting on, choosing your size, choosing your yarn, and we've talked about the, uh, uh, the short row shaping for the neck. Mm -hmm. um, in week two, we dove into the yoke, and we dusted a little bit into the um, raglan shaping as mm -hmm. well. This week, we're going to dive a little bit more into raglan, and we're also going to talk about separating sleeves and some topics that I believe you and I have hot takes on. Yeah. Sleeves. Sleeves. And sleeve options. Yes, there's so many sleeve options. Yes, including some that I didn't know existed until a client, a customer oh. pointed them out. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> well, you'll have to explain yeah. those to me. Yeah, I'll, absolutely. I'll see if I've heard of them. Okay. Um, so, hi, everybody. Nancy, I love that you are enjoying this sweater. Um, and congrats on starting the lower body. Mm -hmm. I saw Nancy's. It's yeah. beautiful. It's like pink, Ooh. speckled. I think it's like a speckled yarn. It's Ooh. beautiful. I yeah. got a text from Julie in the middle of my work day being like, I'm on the ribbing. Yeah. <laughs> Very exciting. It's, it's so fast. And yes. uh, Katie's, Katie is almost done the body, I think, on hers. Oh, wow. I'm, yeah. Okay, I'm behind. Yeah. I just started the body. I just separated for the sleeves on Monday. Yeah. So. Awesome. All right. So should we dive into raglan consideration? Yeah. So maybe a recap of what, why we're switching to Raglan? Yeah. So, I mean, w the why, mm -hmm. I'm not sure of the why, but we, yeah. it is a round yoke sweater to begin with. And then they switch to the Raglan increases just for the lower part. I mean, I guess it's... I think it, I was ruminating this over this this afternoon okay. while I'm supposed to be working on something else. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I was in the back of my mind. Um, and so I um, was wondering, I think it might have originally come about as a way to add the extra sizes in. Okay. Because this is where we're going to start to see multiple sizes diverge in terms of instructions, okay. right? So I think that might be one of the ways. Also, mm -hmm. it, I mean, I love a raglan sleeve, so I'm yeah. not going to fight the fact that it goes raglan halfway. Oh, yeah. So. And it doesn't interfere with the um, the bust. Yeah. You know, like, because I think mm -hmm. you want a nice kind of smooth fabric right here. Yes, yeah. Um, and if you have a lot of increases yes. along there... You know, you might get, you might start to see them sloping in a particular direction. Yeah. Depending on how you work them in. Yeah. Uh, that's a great point. And I suppose it's a lot easier to do the lace and um, patterned part in the round as opposed for sure. to a raglan. That's for so, sure. Yeah. yeah. And then it gives it a nice rounded look. Yeah. Fun little Tuesday afternoon <laughs> pondering. Yeah. Um, Susie, um, I made mistakes and had to rip back, which is one of the advantages of waiting for the cow to hear the pitfalls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So yeah, don't worry about being behind. Somebody says they're behind, but it's really just at your own pace. Yeah. And this is kind of the reason we're doing it. Uh, so you can go back and rewatch if you um, need to catch up. If you need to catch up. Joining or... us months later. Yeah, exactly. Um, and also, I mean, I haven't finished the Felix that we cast on together in the fall. So <laughs> that's my little secret. Yeah. Um, and then, hi Stitches, I, I hope that uh, you figured out your question for your yoke. Yep. Um, if not, you can hit us up. And so, uh, so let's, I wanted to flag a okay. little thing real quick about the raglan that yes. sort of touches base on what we talked about last week when we had our big epiphany mm -hmm. on pattern versions. Mm -hmm. um, if you're knitting from an old version of the pattern that has the main pattern and the PDF um, for uh, like size, the extended for the extended sizing. Mm -hmm. This is a reminder when you hit the raglan section, you're going to have to jump from one PDF to the other, follow the instructions for your size, and then jump back. 
There's usually, I think, a couple of extra instructions that refer to like maybe how many stitches you're gonna remove for a sleeve. So just make a note of that when you're moving between the two. Mm -hmm. um, we've both knit a ton of sweaters from that yeah. version of the pattern, you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, but if you're knitting from the latest version of the pattern, it's all contained in a lovely little chart for you. Yeah. So you can follow along and see what everyone else is doing at the same time if yeah. you're so curious. They really did a good job of yeah. kind of combining the two, um, the two versions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, and so uh, in our in last week's video, we spoke a little bit about the two um, increases that we'll be using for the raglan. Mm -hmm. I can demo them again at the end of the video okay. real quick, especially that knit back and front. Yes, because that's one we don't usually see. Yeah, normally you see a knit front and back, but not a knit back and front. So it's mm -hmm. a little bit of a ooh, that's a that's a jolt. Mm -hmm. So first of all, make sure that you notice that that's a thing in the pattern. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm pretty sure the first one I did, I did not notice that was a thing. Yeah, <laughs> um, and then not that it's the end of the world, but yeah. um, and then so we'll demo that at the end. Okay. Um, and then I also wanted to, from my own previous experience on Sunday, um, when you are using the charts to figure out where, whether you've hit the right number of increases for your raglan section, mm -hmm. um, and the numbers aren't adding up and they seem to be approximately four stitches off per count, you may have forgotten to repeat round one, um, however many times it tells you. Uh, in the very last instruction of the raglan section. Yeah, what happened to me at about eleven o'clock at night. So this is section four. We're talking section about... four. Yeah, right before the second chart. Uh, so you're going to do some raglans that are spaced out by plain rows, mm -hmm. and then you're going to do a couple raglan rows, raglan increased rows that are back to back to back. Mm -hmm. If your numbers are off, there is a chance you forgot the back to back to back, which is what I did. Yeah, and I like that they did this chart. Um, so this chart here. Um, on page, if you have the new version, it's on page nine, section four. Um, it actually tells you within each size how many stitches you're gonna have on the back section, on each sleeve, and the front. And so that's a really easy way to make sure that you are at your exactly. at the right stitch number. Yeah, um, it's, it's easy to yeah. see because uh, sometimes in patterns, the way it's written, it's hard to. Mm find yeah. the information it's all in brackets and stuff like that so it's really okay. nice to have it in a chart yes and i know lots of people especially if you're just repeating two rows back and back and forth mm -hmm. um who like me don't want to be ticking it off every time you've yeah. completed a round if you do that that's great because you're never going to get lost mm -hmm. but i generally am like oh the pen's on the other side so <laughs> if you're just repeating the two instructions back and forth back and forth mm -hmm. counting how many stitches you have in a section is a really great way to see like whether you're halfway yeah. through the instructions or maybe you're almost there, you've only got one more BP to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just looking at the questions. Mm -hmm. Do, do, do. Um, did you talk about the raglan at the end completely? Because I don't recall. Um, I'll go back to the video. That's Meaning, a great question. <laughs> did you do we recall? <laughs> <laughs> did you talk about the raglan at the end? Of last week. Um, In it yeah, I think we did. Yeah. Um, I will... I mean, when you see the, I think so. yeah, um, you'll be able to follow along. If you've completed the yoke, I think you'll be able to follow along the setup round. Yeah. Um, cause you're a rock star now, yeah. but, and um, we'll do the demo at the and end. we'll do the demo for the knit back yeah. and front again. Yeah. Um, because it's a little sneaky sneak mm -hmm. to appear suddenly, but, um, but essentially the, um, a raglan increase, I think we just touched on it a little yeah. bit. If you are, if you're wondering just kind of the basics of what a raglan is, so with your round yoke, you're increasing evenly across the row, or across the round, sorry. And with a raglan, you are increasing only at the shoulder points. Yes. So right, right here, and then at the back of the same. So um, your, your increases are just distributed differently. It's yeah. sort of more of a rectangular shape when you when you splat it out mm -hmm. on paper. I was very tempted to start doing the um, flight attendant. Your, your raglan increases are here <laughs> and here. <Yeah>. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh. Uh, Nancy, if you've got one or two more stitches than in the chart, I, I wouldn't worry too much. Yeah. I was two stitches off on my back, and mm -hmm. I figured I've got more front than back, so I, I don't really care. Yeah, if you are... <sighs> Uh, see, this is yeah. where I'm just like, if you have one extra st stitch or one less no. stitch, it's fine. It'll be fine. It's fine. Yeah. If you're yeah. worried, I would, If the only part where you might want to be worried is if you're going to have a really fitted sleeve. Mm -hmm. But aside from, and I believe that there's a diagram in here that will help you measure 
your bicep. Yeah, measurement F looks mm -hmm. to be bicep. So, so long as your it will fit over your bicep, you should be fine. And once we split for the sleeves, it is just straight knitting and then yep. ribbing. So you don't have to worry about making a lace pattern fit into your exactly number exactly yeah, that's gets, that's why it's yeah it's um fungible yes uh, yeah okay so, so that's the raglan should we have our hot takes on sleeves <laughs> <laughs> i feel like we we hinted at this in the first yes. in the first week yes well <laughs> i mean we also haven't been especially subtle about our feelings <laughs> about particular sleeves yeah so uh we did have a lot of feelings about sleeves <laughs> and I actually, um, I haven't knit the blousy sleeve on this one yet. I have. That was the okay. first one that I knit. Okay. Um, so that would be the sample I think I wore it in the first week. Mm -hmm. And this is the sample that we just held up. It's basically just a stockinette fabric. You mm -hmm. do a bind off at the end that's sort of stretchy so that it's not going to cut off along your upper arm. Mm -hmm. And then because it's just stockinette fabric with nothing along the edge, it's going to kind of curl and float a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fluttery. A little yeah, bit fluttery. a little bit like a cross between, yeah, like a loose cap sleeve almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so depending on the fiber, sometimes it has a tendency to look unfinished. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also found that, I mean, this was in cotton, so, you know, mileage may vary with wool, but I also found that because there isn't any fabric picked up under the arm, mm -hmm. that it is quite a large and deep it is. as well. I, and that's yeah. why I, that's part of what I find looks mm -hmm. unfinished is that it's, uh, kind of, okay, I'm here. it's not, um, what's the word? It's not cohesive. It's if not that eager? makes sense. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it, it needs, for me, it needs mm -hmm. something to kind of hold it together, and that's yeah. why I've done ribbing on them. To be fair, in the defense of the designer, mm -hmm. um, both of us have mostly knit out of fairly substantial yarns, like yeah. sweater yarns. Yeah. And I think if you look at the pictures on the pattern and on the website, mm -hmm. um, in a mohair, in a light, fluffy, yes. sort of angelic -y, floaty yarn, I think it would look less awkward mm -hmm. because it will almost have a force itself holding it in place yeah yeah that makes yeah. sense um so if you wanted a short sleeve caitlin but you didn't want to have the floaty curly sleeve yeah what would you do so what i would do is i would can you pass yeah. it to me this one the no. this one here okay so instead of binding off instead of binding off here I would put this sleeve on uh, on hold as though you were going to knit long sleeves. Then I would knit the body, and then I would come back, and I would pick up the um, these stitches on hold, and I would pick up the stitches along the bottom, mm -hmm. and I would do maybe like a couple of rows mm -hmm. of plain stockinette, and then I would do uh, ribbing. <laughs> Let me just lift this up a little bit. This, I mean, and then we do so, a little bit of ribbing. This is so gosh darn dark, this sample, but that's basically what was done here. Yeah, so that this mm -hmm. is the top of the sweater where my hand is, yep. and this is the armpit. Yep, so glam. Yeah, and then we've got so we put all the stitches on hold, we bound off as indicated, and then mm -hmm. I picked up stitches all the way around and did my ribbing pretty much immediately. Yeah, yeah, and it fits much more akin to the next to the skin mm -hmm. next to the arm mm -hmm. yeah i've also done on my love note which is very similar mm -hmm. i've done a slightly longer sleeve mm -hmm. here's here's my elbow right here yeah so i did it down to just before my elbow okay and i find that's a nice length for yeah. me it, it you know covers my armpits and yes it's nice and yeah sweatery yes and then i believe and we'll talk more about sleeves in terms of construction and how to mm -hmm. knit them mm -hmm. next week, but in terms of preparation and thoughts that you're going to have now, because you kind of have to choose between the two yeah. methods now, yeah. um, you could do a full fitted sleeve to make it a full sweater. Mm -hmm. You could do, I think there's more of like a floaty bishop sleeve. There's options to like have big flow and then like cinch it in at the yes. wrist. Yeah. Yes. I think um, it's like, um, like it's a really full sleeve mm -hmm. and then it, comes in with an I cord. Yeah. Right? Is that that one? Yes. I haven't yeah. done that one yet. But yeah, so it comes in like a blouse. 
kind of tight here. So um, I'm just uh, looking at the comments. So let's talk about techniques because we've got a good question from uh, Susie, mm -hmm. which is you put the stitches on hold right before the first line, which says work next. No. So um, when we are talking about um, putting stitches on hold, we're talking about following the instructions as written for the long sleeves. Apologies for the confusion. Mm -hmm. So if you choose long sleeves, it has instructions on how to put your stitches on hold, when to put them on hold. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of fun, funky stuff going on um, around where you put them on hold. And it's funny because I've got, I know a lot of knitters who are quite proficient knitters, but mm -hmm. who kind of get a little mental block when they see instructions they haven't seen before for separating sleeves. Yeah. And she's got, this designer has a couple of interesting stitches she adds in at the beginning and the end to try and keep a gap from forming to keep those stitches kind of tight, yeah. which is a really neat um, thing to play around with. Mm -hmm. um, so if you would like the floaty cat sleeve, follow the short sleeves. If you would like anything else, whether it be a fitted cap sleeve, mm -hmm. mid sleeve, three quarter, full bishop, mm -hmm. long tapered, anything else than that, mm -hmm. follow the instructions for the long sleeves. Mm -hmm. And then once you've knit the body of your sweater, you can go back and decide what length and how balloony yeah. you would like those sleeves. And that'll depend on how much yarn you have too, because some, yes. sometimes we've, you know, we want to try to make a sweater with like, I have three skeins or two skeins or whatever it is, and it's like, I'll see how much yarn I have, and then I'll decide. <laughs> Can we I swear to God, you read my brain because I was looking for the perfect way to segue into that discussion. Yeah. Which is, that is exactly the position I'm in. Yeah. I have two cones. They are about, I don't know, 650 meters or something. I think something like yeah. that. Yeah. And, um, and that's all. That's all I got. Yep. And I am a little worried about playing yarn chicken in like a logical kind of fashion. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit like two inches of my body. Okay. I'm going to cut my yarn. Okay. I'm gonna knit both my sleeves mm -hmm. because I just want short rib, rib right. sleeves. Because it's a, a linen, you want yeah, a summer want top. Kind of like that crazy white one that I have. Okay. I just want something that's gonna throw over over dresses. Right. Like that. Um, and then I'll go back, rejoin my yarn, and knit the rest of the body. And that way I can really maximize the yarn on the mm -hmm. body, but also ensure that I have enough yeah. for my arms. Perfect. Uh, so. Uh, Susie, yes, you would finish section five for the long sleeves until the end. And then once you've got that um, one and a quarter rounds complete, you would then skip to section six, which is working the body of the sweater. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Timna had a good comment too. Uh, that She says, that's what I've done before for lighter yarns. I also pull from the middle of the yarn ball, finish the sleeves first so that I can use the whole skein if working from one ball. That yeah. is an excellent idea. And yeah. I would normally do that, except they come in cones. And I'm lazy and I don't want to rewind <laughs> the yarn. Yeah. I would yeah. much rather just weave in the extra ends. Yeah. Uh, different kind of laziness, apparently. <laughs> And if you have a scale too, like a kitchen scale, that can be helpful. Yes. I've I've often done that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, especially for the body of the of the sweater because mm -hmm. if you give yourself like an extra gram or whatever of difference based on like whether you're going to be ribbing or doing stockinette, you're just knitting a straight tube. Mm -hmm. So if you knit a row and measure before and afterwards how much your ball of yarn weighs, you'll be able to gauge how many yarn how, how many rows you'll be able to get left mm -hmm. in the in the project body. Um, and then I think we also missed a comment from Stitch as well about how they finished or how they fixed their problem, which is that they didn't have enough stitches in the front. Right. So... Or in, in the body of their sweater. Okay. So they ripped back, inserted vertical darts, starting one inch below the yoke and one inch in from the raglan. This allowed me to increase about eight inches in the front to give me some more ease. Nice. For my bust. Cool. Really nice hack. If yeah. folks are wondering... What that means you're putting in some short row wedges i'm assuming maybe mm -hmm. they did it in a different way mm -hmm. but when we were talking about the felix we were talking about putting in short row wedges that would lower just a part mm -hmm. of the work so that it would cover if you have a larger bust yeah 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 um, stitch as well was having an issue with um gauge with gauge i think right yeah yeah so that's a really clever way to fix it not short. not short row but oh vertical sorry okay you said vertical. oh i got you got you got you so expanding that way okay cool cool well, I'm glad it worked out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that, is everybody clear on dividing for the body and sleeves? 
Also, I would like to establish that we will not judge you if you use the floaty sleeve. <laughs> yeah. I just yeah, want to make totally. that perfectly clear. <laughs> totally. I, it's just not for me. That's yeah. all. Yeah. I think it's not for the yarn that I chose to try it out in. <laughs> I think I might have to try it in a lighter, oh. flouncier, um, yeah, totally. fluffier yarn. I think I, I, I like how it looks, but I it's not how I dress. That's fair. Like, I, I've seen it on people. It looks beautiful. It's mm -hmm. very floaty. It looks very, like, pretty and blousy. Mm -hmm. And I don't, like, yeah. I don't wear a lot of floaty stuff. That's all. I could see it's myself. It's just a style thing, yeah. really. I could see myself wearing it with, like, a fitted, but, like, high round neck and long sleeve, but mm -hmm. fitted, like, linen dress or something. Yeah. That would be kind of fun. That would be cute. Okay, so Susie says the round marker, it's, it's mm. a way back yes that's the original end of round marker so Susie has a question about uh, the instructions in section five mm -hmm. when you see rm uh rm you're correct it does mean remove marker so if we move through um that particular instruction i'm going to look at the long sleeves but i imagine that you've got something similar going on mm -hmm. um, for the short sleeve version of section five so what you're going to be doing is removing all of your raglan markers mm -hmm. as well as the marker that has been sitting in the back of the work, splitting half and half of your back stitches. Mm -hmm. And that was the end of round marker. That was the end of round okay. marker. That's been the end of round marker since the beginning of the project. Okay. And so what we're going to be doing from now on is having it under, I think it's this arm. Okay. It's under one of the arms. And the idea, and that's a pretty common convention in sweater knitting, is that you put the end of round under an arm so that your arms are going to mostly cover any change in stitch right, right? Right, right right in this in this particular pattern it's not especially important because it's mostly stock and then you hit ribbing but if you were doing something with like a lot more texture or with color work or striping mm -hmm. usually you'll find that either under the arm well yeah after you've split for the sleeves you'll see it under the arm because that's the part okay. that's going to most likely be covered by your body yeah so okay. they have you moving the end of round marker exactly and that is why you see that instruction work next one and a quarter rounds or two and a quarter rounds because you are shifting that marker mm -hmm. a quarter of the way through the round. Yeah, and you're not going to need the raglan markers anymore. Nope, because it's smooth sailing from this point onwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Any other questions about sleeves before we dive into the, the world of mm -hmm. demos? Yeah, because I'm, I'm not sure um, if there's anyone here who's never knit a sweater. There might be. So Welcome. just if you have yeah. any raglan questions or, or like dividing for the body and sleeves, mm -hmm. let us know. I'll demonstrate. Um, I pulled out my darning needle and some scrap yarn. Mm -hmm. So I will show you how to slide those stitches onto your scrap mm -hmm. yarn. Um, but okay, I think it's cool. time to dive into demo land. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's do that. Yeah. And we'll move the camera. And so I'm going to remind you guys of how to do the knit back and front. Mm -hmm. And we'll demo the um, elastic bind off, we'll demo the cable cast on, um, maybe a little bit of the fussy business. Oh, yes. Is this your swatch? That I'm is my swatch. Right here. I fixed my swatch from last week, so it doesn't look <laughs> wild anymore, <laughs> which is lovely. It's a lot more coherent. Um, all righty, I'm gonna come around. Okay. I think that's probably sufficient. Okay. So let's start mm -hmm. with a recap from last week, which was the knit back and front. Okay. Am I in frame? You are. Huzzah! Okay. <laughs> so, I feel like I say that every time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to knit two stitches. Okay. And then I'm going to actually start by demoing the knit front and back so we know what we're comparing it to. Mm -hmm. So the knit front and back is a fairly common increase. Go into the front of the stitch, wrap your yarn, come back out, but you don't come off. Instead, you go into the back of the stitch here, trying not to split your very old yarn, wrap your yarn, come back out. Now you've got two stitches coming off of one and you let the stitch come off of the left-hand needle. So let me knit two plain stitches. And let's do the knit back in front. So very similar, except in reverse. So you're gonna knit into the back of the stitch, yarn over and come back out. 
And then without coming out of coming off the left hand needle yet, you're gonna go into the front of the stitch, same stitch, yarn over, come back out, and off. So let's do it one more time. I'm just gonna knit two stitches so we get away from the increase. Give myself a little more yarn. Mm -hmm. Timna says I might have knit front to back. That's I, fine. I probably did also. Yeah. I I, I feel yeah. <laughs> I feel like I have this epiphany every time. Oh. I knit one and I'm like, oh, it was a different increase. Oh my <laughs> goodness, I don't think I did it that way before. It's totally fine. Anyway, you'll serve it, the sweater is fine. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do this again. So we're gonna knit into the back of the stitch, wrap, come out. And then without taking it off the left hand needle, we're gonna go into the front of the stitch like normal. Yarn over, come out. And now that we've got both of our, our uh, two stitches, we're gonna pop it off the needle and knit one and finish that row. And so we have our lovely little increases there. And why do you think, what, what is the, how does it look different, do you find? Uh, I, one like lean one way and one leans the other They way? don't, which I do find a little bit confusing. Okay. Um, but I do think um, where the bump, so you get sort of a little bump. Here we go, you can see there's a little bump there and there's a little bump there. And I think it sits slightly different in the fabric. I think okay. it sits to the back or the front. Um, but beyond that, I, I don't actually... I have been looking for it, and mm -hmm. I don't know. So I, I genuinely, with every ounce of authenticity, mm -hmm. you can totally just do knit front and back, and you probably <laughs> won't run into any. Yeah, issues. I, that's yeah. that's what I've yeah. done. Um, Andrea said, "This is a chain from the old version of the pattern." So um, we were talking about this earlier, Andrea, about how they have um, they have released a new version of the pattern. So I've been just using my old one, which... But it does have the knit front and the, it, the knit back and front. It has the knit back and front. Um, yeah. But what's really funny is that there's a typo in the old version that I have, where in the, okay. in the description says knit back and back, and I'm like, that's... Oh, that's definitely not, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not it. But yes, no, there's a knit back and front. Yeah. But I mean, I could have been knitting from a different older version than, than Andrea could have been. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So in any case, um, to Andrea's point, yeah, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And to Timna's too. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we've got the knit back and front. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'm going to demonstrate. I'm just going to go through a little bit of the, the technical part of uh, removing your stitches for sleeves. Oh, yeah. yeah. You could make a little mini sleeve on that. I'm just thinking <laughs> the exact same thing. Oh, my God, we're two nerds. Mm. <laughs> Everyone's screwed. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna start by knitting two stitches to get away from the edge. Oh, what the heck? I'm gonna do a third. I'm gonna live dangerously. Okay, mm. one, two, and a three. All right, so there. this is some of the little fussy business. Uh, I don't know why I'm calling it fussy, but the, the special business yeah. around each of the stitches, mm -hmm. or sorry, each of the sleeve um, sides. Mm -hmm. So once you've knit to the point where you're going to slip your stitches. So this would be like where my marker was. Um, you wanna bring your yarn forward. You're gonna slip your stitch. You're gonna bring the yarn to the back and you're gonna slip your stitch back again. And then, I'm <laughs> reading the instruction. Okay, so once you've done that, then you're going to place a bunch of stitches, however many your pattern tells you to do. Well, I guess it'll be the number of stitches between your markers. Yeah. You don't actually have probably, to count. Yes. So let's pretend I have a marker here. So you're going to slip those stitches onto some scrap yarn, or if you have a stitch holder, that will also work. Mm -hmm. I always find it easier to, well, cheaper, first of all, because I have scrap yarn mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, but also, it's easier to try on a sweater in progress if you've got your stitches on scrap yarn. That's enough that you can fit your arm through. Yeah. As opposed to um, a stitch marker, or no, a stitch holder, which kind of looks like one of those old diaper pins. Yeah. Um, and it holds your stuff in place. Totally can use it, but you might have to put it on your stitches onto a lifeline to try on the sweater. Yeah. If you're I prefer this way size. too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, and as we all know from the Felix um, knit along, I just take all my yarn scraps and chuck them in my um, notions bag for this exact purpose. All right, so I've got my yarn loaded up onto my darning needle, and I'm just going to go in purlwise and slip stitches off onto my needle. Going in purlwise is important because that means you're not going to twist your stitches. 
Uh, I'm gonna pull through a little bit. I'm gonna do two more. There we go. Ugh. Put those back on. There we are. I'm gonna pull all the way through on this tail end so that I now have two clear ends where I can tie. I'm just gonna tie whatever this knot is called. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, <laughs> some sort of a hitch, yep. I feel like. Yep. And now I've got all these stitches sitting on my scrap yarn. Now, I'm for this particular swatch, I'm using a bulky weight yarn, and if I was at home, I probably would use a thicker um, yarn or use this like doubled up so that these stitches couldn't drop or shrink as easily. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, you also, if you're thinking about different yarns that you could use, something that's slippery and not too sticky, mohair is a terrible idea for a lifeline or terrible. for um, this, kind of, <laughs> this kind of work. Anything too sticky or too fragile, um, if it's like a really loosely spun, woolen spun, um, I'm thinking about that plateau lopi, yeah, just yeah. any kind of lopi really, anything that you can... You can blink at it and it will tear on you. Um, don't use that don't yarn. Use, that. use like dishcloth cotton. Uh, okay, so I have slipped off my stitches mm -hmm. and now I'm going to cast on some stitches and that'll be the... Um, Underarm. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, I, you could see me looking at the swatch trying to figure out which way I was looking at. So the stitches I've taken off will be the top of the sleeve. We're gonna cast on some underarm stitches now. And to do that, we're gonna use the cable cast on. Um, and in order to do that, we need to turn our work for a brief moment. So, turn our work, okay. And you can see why, because our yarn is all the way back at this, um, this stitch here. So we need to be able to get our needle in here and our yarn over here. Okay, I'm gonna take the yarn, push it to the back for a second. Um, so this cable cast on is very similar to a knitted cast on where you go into the stitch, wrap, come out, and then put the loop on the needle. But a cable cast on, instead of going into your stitch, you're gonna go into the space between the stitches. And as I say this, I realize we've already learned this technique mm -hmm. from the yoke. So uh, go in between this, the two stitches on your needle, wrap your yarn, come back out, pull out the loop a little bit, and pop it on your needle, and I pop from underneath, so the left hand needle goes under the stitch, like so, and then pull to tighten a little bit. And then I'm going to go in between now the first two stitches and repeat, wrap the yarn, come forward, pull out, grab, and then I'll do it again, always between the first two stitches. And so there is a particular number of stitches in the needle, or sorry, in the instructions. You're gonna cast on basically half of your underarm pop a marker on, and then cast on the other rest of your underarm stitches, but I don't have a marker with mm -hmm. me, so I'm just gonna cast on a few more. And this is just one way to do it. Like, I yeah. I often do just the E cast on yep. for an underarm, um, and that works just fine. Yeah. Um, so you, you want can... something that's not too stretchy. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, so it's funny because when I teach people how to knit, I'm always like, learn a stretchy cast on, because it's going to serve you well in all your projects. Mm -hmm. The ones where you just, like Caitlin said, you just wrap it around your thumb and pop it on. Mm -hmm. Not a great cast on for learning or for starting the beginning of like a scarf or a hat or a sweater, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but really handy anywhere where you don't want the fabric to stretch. So we're using this cast on, but like Caitlin said, a knitted cast on, an e-cast on, those would be fine um, because they will not be as stretchy and therefore you won't get this weird floppy underarm. Mm -hmm. um, so let's pretend that I have cast on however many stitches I needed. Um, and now we're gonna do a little bit more fancy work before we move on. And that would be to, uh, I believe, turn the work again. Doop, doop, doop. So now we're back to how we were, how the stitches looked at the beginning of this round, okay? So this, we were moving along our sweater, we took these stitches off, we cast on some stitches, and mm -hmm. now we're ready to proceed and continue knitting around the round of the sweater. Uh, so we are going to do one more little fancy bit, and that is we're gonna take a stitch from the left-hand needle and slip it purlwise onto the right. We're gonna take this last stitch that we cast on, pull it up, over, and off, and then we're gonna move the stitch back over to the left-hand needle. And then 
I believe we carry on our man merry way. Mm -hmm. Yes, just did I do that right? Hold on. Nope, I didn't do that right. Uh, you don't move it back at the end. It just stays there. You don't knit that stitch. It's just going to stay a little bit um, firmer on your needle. Mm -hmm. And then you move on. Boop, okay. ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. And what that does, what that and the first one that we did, what they both do is they keep these corner pieces of your sleeve just a little bit extra tight. And one of the instructions is that when you are doing that last weird stitch, you're passing that cast on stitch over, you can pull the yarn a little bit tight again, just to give it some firmness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is to prevent holes. Exactly. In the underarm. How do you find this one? Does it work really well? Because I, I do my own thing. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. gonna say it's been a while. Mm -hmm. We'll find out next week when I pick up my sleeves yeah. and come back. Um, I usually have no problem adding an extra yarn or having an extra long tail when I join and pick up those stitches underneath. Mm -hmm. um, just to, I use it to sew up any holes. I don't yeah. have to just move in the ends. Um, so there we go. We have um, our uh, sleeve yeah. separation for oh. the long sleeves. And so you can that see- that cute little sleeve. Oh, such a cute little sleeve hole. So that's <laughs> where you would pick up your stitches uh, or put your stitches back on the needle, I should say, to continue knitting your, knitting your sleeve. Mm -hmm. And then you would be picking up your stitches along this part here where we did our cast on, mm -hmm. at which we will demonstrate next week. Yeah. Um, but if you're impatient, we definitely picked up stitches in the Felix knit along. Um, so you're welcome to, to read ahead there. Um, any questions so far? Um, or are you all know. very confused and or no. Cursing me. <laughs> <laughs> no questions. Okay. No questions. Okay, great. Um, yeah. And then I think the only other one that I wanted to demonstrate was um, this elastic bind off that you would use if you're going to be following the instructions for the short sleeve um, instead okay. of for the long sleeve. So we'll do that super quick and then I think uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah I think okay. so. So you're doing another demo. Yeah, just okay. really quick. Cool. So the elastic. Um, we'll start with a slip stitch. Uh, this is in the round, so you won't have this weird issue of <laughs> where your yarn's supposed to be. Um, I'm just going to tuck mine back there in a knit stitch. Okay. And now you're going to put your left hand needle in these, the front of those two stitches, wrap your yarn and come back out. And basically what you're doing is you're knitting through the back loop. So, let me see if we can hit another one, like so. And if it's getting a little confusing, you can knit the second stitch, slip it back, slip both of them back over, mm -hmm. and then knit through the back loop. If it's easier for you to conceptualize that way, but it is a lot more It's more work. steps. More steps, yeah. So ideally, when you get comfortable, you knit a stitch, pop your needle on the front, wrap, pull through both, and it leaves you with one stitch left on your needle. So this is if you're doing the flutter sleeves. Yeah, exactly. You, this you is the short sleeve. Yeah, you're going to bind those off. You're still going to cast on stitches for the underarm as well, mm -hmm. um, but instead of having live stitches that you put back onto needles at the end to do your sleeve, you're going to have this elastic bind off, which kind of gives a little flutter to mm -hmm. the finished project. Okay, cool. I Thanks, think that's Sam. it for demos. Yeah, let me move this back up. Um, and on the topic of flutter sleeves, mm -hmm. I do believe that Vicky was going to oh. do a, like a super flutter sleeve. So she was oh. going to take sort of the concept of a flutter sleeve okay. and really roll with it. Okay. Um, apparently there is a mystical magical project on Ravelry that has um, this Ooh. sort of thing. And I think what happened when I saw what I think was the project she was talking about was maybe that someone had done the short sleeve was like, oh, I feel like I could take it even further mm -hmm. and then maybe picked up the stitches and did a little bit of like extra fabric yeah. and flutter. But I think you could also just do it by following the long sleeve instructions and not have to bother picking up the stitches. Sorry, mm -hmm. I need water. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so I did, um, I mean, if anyone wanted a ruffle, Ruffly sleeve. I don't know. Um, That's what I'm just looking for. But uh, I did a sweater for my daughter, mm. and it has 
it's like a it's like a little bolero and on the back uh, there's a little panel it kind of comes to maybe just mid back mm -hmm. right and at the bottom there's a little like maybe three inch piece um, that's a ruffle and I think there was I think what you do is you do a whole bunch of increases mm -hmm. you you know you double or triple your your stitch count um, yeah. it's like knit one make one knit one make one and then you knit that for a bit and it ripples the fabric mm -hmm. like a gathered sleeve. I was say, it's like the exact opposite of the feature you're trying to do when you want like a regular yoke. Yeah. You want it to be a nice smooth increase. Yeah. The right number of stitches increased per like length down the yoke. Mm -hmm. This is the reverse of that where you're just like stitches. Yeah. And if you <laughs> if you are a sewer or a sewist, you would be familiar with gathering. Yes. And how that works is you you for the bottom of your dress or something mm -hmm. you would cut a piece that's two or three times the length depending on how much gathering you do and you scrunch it all back in yeah yeah handy, so handy. it's the same same idea um okay oh, nancy is on it with the questions yeah um where my husband's trying to get in <laughs> <laughs> there we go success okay Yes, um, success. where are you going to demonstrate and talk about next week? Just yeah. wondering where to knit to. So I would knit, um, sections four and five. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you could do most of section six as well. Yeah. Cause it is just, um, knitting in the round for the body of the sweater mm -hmm. and then, uh, doing the hem ribbing, mm -hmm. which we can demonstrate again next week. But, uh, I believe. It is a very similar ribbing, if not exactly the same to the one that you started with for the neckline. Yeah. 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 Um, so we will recap on body again mm -hmm. um, next week. But um, yeah, I feel like you guys have most of the skills. Yeah, I think so. I think you, you guys are doing an awesome job. If you're having trick or, like itchy knitting fingers <laughs> yeah. and you just want to keep going, which I don't blame you, <laughs> um, that would be where I would yeah. stop. We'll talk about... Um, the different, uh, or sorry, the ways to knit your sleeve. Mm -hmm. um, we'll talk about that cuff, that interesting I cord cuff, and the mm -hmm. just a little bit short row shape thing. Just a reminder that I have to brush up on that one. Yeah, <laughs> good. Um, yeah. And then the um, the ribbing for the bottom. Yeah, yeah. If you because I do a different ribbing. For I was the gonna say if you want to hold off on your ribbing for the bottom. Mm -hmm. Caitlin does do a really nice, very pretty ribbing. Yeah. And she can, she's going to share that next week. It's on a sample at the store. So if you are in the store and you want to see what it looks like, it's a, I think it's called a split rib mm -hmm. or a broken rib, broken mm, rib yes, stitch. Yes. Broken rib. Yeah. It's a broken rib stitch. And I like the way it, it doesn't, um, I, I always say it doesn't squinch in. <laughs> it doesn't like tighten That's, at the bottom. I know exactly it what you It lays nice and flat, which yeah. is what I like. Yes. So if you want to look at it, it's in the store. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's, a couple of people were asking about the mohair and fingering weight held double. And that the sweater that I've got in the store is just that. Ooh. Yeah. So if you want to touch and see how lovely and soft it is. Sweater is it now? We're just, yeah. just get distracted at this point. It's, I'll ask you about it afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, ha I had it here the first day. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, yes. the mo okay, mohair. Okay, now line. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Vina, I'm so glad you joined us, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited for you to cast on your ranunculus. Yeah. Whenever you get to it, there's awesome. no rush. It will be waiting for you. <laughs> and then this is the portion of the evening where we sound like we're in a cult again. <laughs> <laughs> the sweater will be waiting for you. Um, any last questions before mm. we sign off for the evening? Mm. Don't uh, look like it yet. It sounds like everybody is yeah. totally rocking it. Yeah, I'm glad Andrea yeah. was able to get on. Yes. Yeah. Um, and... Um, if you uh, have any questions, again, pop it either via email, mm -hmm. um, social media. You can put it in the comments of this video. One thing I realized last week is if you do have a question, um, include your the size you're knitting and your gauge if possible. If yeah, yeah. if it's uh, yeah. if it's like a sizing question. Yeah, yeah. Yes. perfect. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, we'll see you next week. Yes. Thank you, everybody, Bye. for joining. Happy Thank knitting. You. <laughs>